then the questioner says acharya ji pranam from verse 25 to 33 of chapter 4 shri krishna speaks of the following sacrifices to gods sacrifice of self which is the ego aham sacrifice of organs of senses sacrifice of objects of senses sacrifice of functions of senses sacrifice of wealth sacrifice by austerity sacrifice by study of scriptures sacrifice by restraint of breath and sacrifice of diet so a lot of verses have been quoted acharya what is really meant by a sacrifice or yagya and what is really meant by gyan yagya that krishna says is greater than all the other sacrifices or yagya please also help us understand the meaning of verse 33 that says all actions in their totality culminate in knowledge no no that's not what verse 33 says not culminate in knowledge dissolve in knowledge the word used is parisamapyate parisamapyate and ending samapti the word apt apt means highest a climax some apt means having truly attained the climax that is samapt having truly attained the climax that is samapt so when it is said here that uh, all actions in their totality culminate in knowledge what is meant is that real understanding gives you a dissolution of all actions all actions dissolve in understanding what does that mean what is it that actions leave behind their fruits right their residues but in understanding actions do not leave behind any residue because in understanding you do not act for the sake of the residue the action itself is chosen so wisely that it will not leave behind any fruit any clutter any dirt hmm which simply means nishkam karma you do not act for the sake of the result that's the mark of wisdom or understanding you just act therefore action leaves you with no obligations no achievements nor any heartbreaks what is an achievement what is a feeling of elation what is this euphoria on the success of an action it is the fruit of action right i acted and my action achieved the target it was directed at so now i am feeling elated this is a residue of action the action has left me with elation elation is a residue of action similarly what is disappointment or heartbreak the action did not fetch me what i wanted from it so what has the action left me with despair sadness what is this sadness it is a residue or fruit of the action both of these residues come only to those who acts in order to get something get something for whom to whom is the euphoria to whom is the sadness 
to the actor so happiness or sadness come to you only when you act for the sake of your own gratification when you do not act for the sake of your own personal benefit or gratification then action leaves you with neither happiness nor sadness you are free of the action that's what krishna is saying here your action has attained closure your action has attained fulfillment what if you are left with bitterness after the action what will that lead to that will lead to the next action uh, so you are not liberated you are still under the obligation to act one more time because the action has left you with bitterness what if the action leaves you with a sense of accomplishment again you will be tempted to act one more time you see i got something can't i repeat my success so you see you are not liberated you are not liberated because you are again obligated to act one more time and you have created future for yourself so you are caught in the cycle of time if you want to act one more time what do you require if you want to act one more time you require one more time you require time and if you require time then you are still caught in the clockwork hmm you are not free of time you are still in kal chakra you are still in kal chakra kal is time and kal is death hmm and you will be afraid getting it now the questioner is saying what is meant by a sacrifice and what is meant by gyan yagya sacrifice obviously means giving up or offering at the root of sacrifice is realization what realization because the questioner says what is sacrifice and what is gyan yagya and why is gyan yagya higher than all other sacrifices so we'll consider sacrifice and we'll consider what is gyan or realization what is at the root of all sacrifice when would you sacrifice something for something else seeing that the thing that you have is of lower value than what you would get post sacrificing it so in that sense it is actually just a trade off but it's a very wise trade off hmm it's a bargain in wisdom you are giving up something that has a lower value and having given this thing up you attain something that has a higher value right this is yagya yagya says oh of what use is this little self to me i give this up having given this self up what do i get i get the greater self the real self the pure self i have given up the false self the little self the ego having given up the ego i attain something immensely bigger so it's a profitable bargain a small thing has been given and something big has been attained similarly sacrifice of organ of senses objects of senses function of senses wealth this that basically we are talking of a value system here we must know how to assess how to evaluate we must know what is the right value of one thing vis-a-vis -vis another thing and we must know that truth and freedom are the most valuable therefore anything can be sacrificed for their sake hence and then only this becomes obvious this thing falls in place i can give up my wealth if giving up of wealth brings freedom to me i can give up my knowledge hmm? i can give up senses pleasures ego concepts all these things i can give up and then in between uh, some of the verses have also talked of the way of giving up three ways have been listed here by the questioner sacrifice through austerity 
sacrifice through study of scriptures, sacrifice through pranayama or restraint of breath. So these are the three ways of giving up. Hmm? There is stuff that you give up and there are ways in which you give up. So three ways are also listed here. What is central is the intention to give up. Hmm? And remember that giving up in the spiritual sense is not charity. Giving up in the spiritual sense is good business. You have given a smaller thing up and attained something far bigger, infinitely more profitable. In fact, that's one way to define joy. Do not call joy as freedom from pleasure. Just call joy as higher pleasure. Now if you call joy as higher pleasure, then it becomes possible to sacrifice the lower pleasures for the sake of the higher pleasure called joy. Otherwise, spirituality remains very scary to people who have been spoken to in the language of renunciation. Give this up, give that up. The ego asks, but why? All I have is this 10 rupee note and you are asking me to give it up. No, you have to, in the same breath, tell him that by giving up this 10 rupee note, you will indeed get something that is worth rupees 500. Hmm? And you have to really demonstrate it. He must be able to see it in his life that by giving up on smaller pleasures or you know, the so-called good things of life, he has now attained a state <coughs> that is far higher, a state that he would not like to exchange in return for anything. Hmm? 